The Middle East has been in the news a lot over the past few years, particularly since 2014 with the rise of ISIS. Another group that's risen to prominence in the media since then has been the Kurds, often referred to as the front line against ISIS. There are over 30 million Kurds scattered around the world, and as you can see from the orange areas on the map below, they inhabit areas predominantly in Turkey, Iran, Iraq and Syria. In their fight against ISIS, the Kurds have shown what some people believe to be an unprecedented level of cooperation. In my thesis, however, I argue that this level of co cooperation is not unprecedented, that there have been a number of examples prior to this. I have therefore selected four case studies that best illustrate this cross-border cooperation between two or more Kurdish parties that has made a significant impact on the development of one or more of those parties and that shows a clear evolution of this cross-border cooperation. But why is this important? The Kurds would like autonomy, ideally the same level or greater level of autonomy as the Iraqi Kurds have enjoyed since 2003. Of course, they'd ideally like their own nation state. But since they inhabit one of the most resource-rich areas of the Middle East, with oil, water, cereals, minerals, livestock and fruit, it's unlikely that their host countries will cede them any further territory. Furthermore, international stakeholders such as the UK, the US, the EU and Russia are concerned about the potential impact on the stability of the Middle East. So what will happen once the war in Syria is over and ISIS has been defeated? I don't know, but what my thesis aims to show is that this level of cooperation that we've seen between the Kurds is not unprecedented. It is in fact a natural evolution of previous examples of cross-border multi-party Kurdish cooperation and is something upon which they can build. Thank you.